go. All right, so I have Photoshop open and the course. Go to content. Go ahead and click to open your Cengage textbook. And then we are working on the first part of chapter four today, um, which are files 4-1, 4-2, and 4-3. The rest of chapter four we'll do next week. Oh, yay, my video came back. That had disappeared, so I'm glad that's there. All right, so I've already downloaded these files. I uh, suggest you do the same before you get started. Save them somewhere where you can find them easily, um, like a folder on your desktop. And then in Cengage Chapter 4, working with type and gradients. I don't often work with type in Photoshop, but it's very similar to working with type in Illustrator. So those of you who have taken Illustrator, this will probably look about the same. Okay. First thing we're going to do is open file 4-1. So I'm going to go to file, open, and then in the folder that I've saved my files, which is not that one. Let's see. Chapters here, 4-1, open. Okay, so press letter D on your keypad for the foreground to reset your foreground and background to default. So D, black will be your foreground, white will be your background. And then we're going to use the horizontal type tool on the toolbar, set your type size to 24. And I'm sorry, using the options panel and set your foreground color to black. I don't know why we're doing that twice, but there you go. Okay, so with our horizontal type tool here, so if you just press down on these, you can see all the options underneath, but that's the, uh, the first one, the default one. It says float over the canvas, then click the cursor on the left side. Where'd it go? Hold on, let me do that again. I'm going to just draw a little box like this. Y'all, why is this not working right now? This is weird. Hold on. Maybe it's because I ignored that step. All right, let's start from scratch. It's because Caden's here, just so y'all know. This, this worked and then he came. So click the horizontal type tool here and then we are going to do D to set our default to black, even though it already said. And we're gonna type the word typography. Change this font size to 24. Hold on, if I reverse these, what happens? Okay, y'all, I'm doing something wrong and I don't know what it is. So I'm for real, I'm gonna start from scratch. Hold on. File open 4-1 open. Let me know if you see what I'm doing wrong, please let me know because I did this assignment yesterday. <laughs> 
and it didn't have this problem. Okay, so press the letter D. To set your foreground and background colors to, on the toolbar to default black over white, right? Then click the horizontal type tool. Set your type to 24 points in the options panel. So that's correct. All right, and then on the options panel, set your foreground. All right, never mind, sorry, set your foreground to black. And then I put a note, press D for default. You can toggle your foreground and, back and background with the um, keyboard shortcut X. Okay, then click. Now it worked. Y'all, I have no idea what I was doing incorrectly, but it worked then. Okay. So whenever you first set up a text box, you're going to get um, lorem ipsum text, which is just a placeholder. And so that's what it currently says. Then as soon as you start typing, so we're going to type the word typography here, that lorem ipsum will go away. And just move it back onto the canvas. All right, now on the character panel, click the font family list arrow and choose Times New Roman. So I'm going to close my layers panel and I'm going to open the character panel. Mine's here, but if yours is not, you can go to Window, Character, and We'll find Times New Roman and then move so that it is centered on the canvas. All right, so I'll put it right about there. Click the font style arrow and click bold and set the font style to 60. So here you have regular italic bold um, and then you have your size right here. Show the swatches panel and then click any blue swatch. So you have the option here to change the color, but they're asking us to go into the swatches panel. So I'll do that and I will choose a blue. Then when I open my character panel back, you can see that color is shown there. So now we're going to use our tracking and kerning features. Um, so tracking is adjusting space on the entire word. So if I want the same amount of space between the T, the Y, the P, the O, and so on, um, tracking will do that evenly. Kerning, however, will allow me to adjust the space in between individual characters. For instance, if I wanted the Y to be closer to the T, I would use the kerning. So, um, it says click the horizontal type tool on the toolbar and double click the word typography. And that'll select it. And then enter negative 75 on in the tracking box. So they identify the tracking box here, just so you know. Um, in the rest of this, they don't do a spectacular job at showing you what the little icons look like. So you may have to hover over them and wait until the little yellow things come up and identify what those particular boxes mean. So but for this one, we're using tracking, which is this here. We're going to enter negative 75 and then enter. And so you can see all the letters got negative 75 points closer. Now change the tracking to negative 25. Click your cursor between the P and the H, and then we're going to set the kerning to negative 25. Now your kerning is this one right here. So the second one down. And so you can see the P and the H got closer together. Now click the cursor between the H and the Y and click negative 25 in the kerning.
and save your work. I was flustered, so I didn't save it yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my save as commit to the type layer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and we'll name this one typography. Okay. All right, so for this next one, rasterize and paint the type. Verify that the typography layer is targeted. Remember when you have a layer targeted, it's um, gray or whatever color you have your set to, it'll be an offset color in your layers panel. So click layer on your menu bar, rasterize, then type. So um, if you are an Illustrator user, and you've heard me say to you one million times um, to outline <laughs> to outline your text. This is the Photoshop version of outlining your text. You're taking your text and you're rasterizing it to make it um, a pixel or a group of pixels. Okay, so layer and rasterize, which is in here somewhere. There it is. Type. Now hide the background layer. So use your little eye there. Press letter D to access the foreground and background colors. Press option delete or alt delete to fill the background with the foreground color. So alt delete. And now it has filled the layer with black. And then there's a little note here for the remainder of the chapter, use option delete or alt delete when you're instructed to fill. So I tried to make little notes here um, for you on the fill, but yeah, that's something we'll need to start to memorize. Now undo the fill and lock the transparent pixels button on the layers panel as shown in figure four. So edit, undo fill layer. And then we're going to use this little lock pixels. And you'll have this little lock symbol pop up in your layers panel. So now fill the layer again with the background color. So Alt Delete. And now just the text is uh, being filled. So click a bright red swatch in the swatches panel, press the letter B for your brush and set the brush size to 50 and the hardness to 100 and then set the opacity to 100%. Okay, so we're going to close both of those, get our swatches, select a red, then B for the brushes. Set the size to 50, the hardness to 100, the opacity is at 100%. So enter. Paint different areas of the type, then compare your results. So just willy nilly, do whatever you want here. And so with that brush, I've only um, <clears throat> affected that type and not any of the background or other pixels around it. So now the last step says show that background layer and close your file or save first and then close. So show your background, file, save, and then you are ready to submit that one. Does anybody have any questions? You all good? Are you there? All right, 
So moving on to lesson two, fingers crossed. So this one, um, I was messing around with yesterday and there were, there were some odd things going on, which is why I was really surprised. <laughs> the first file had no problems um, yesterday, but this one, it took a little finagling. So I'll show you what I had to do to get the same results. Um, but first, okay, we'll open 4-2, so file, open, 4-2. All right, and then it says click the headline layer so that it's active. And then click layer, layer style, and bevel and emboss. So layer, layer style, bevel and emboss. So you remember we have this fun box. I need to move it so you can see somewhere. Why can't the box just be a little smaller? Okay. I guess we'll just be looking at the bottom. Okay. So, um, what happened when I tried to do this was it, it got really, really wonky. And so what my suggestion here is, is to go ahead and reset to default. When you open this box, just go ahead and click that button reset to default. Um, I also was kind of concerned if my foreground and background layer or my foreground and background color not being in default may have had some impact on it. I'm still the verdicts out on that. So if um, my suggestion is, and we'll see, because mine's not set to default, if this doesn't look right, we will um, set that to default and then try it again. But fingers crossed that just resetting this panel here will be enough. Okay. So set the style to emboss and the technique to smooth and depth to 100. Oh, thank you so much, Janelle. All right, set the size to 24 and soften to zero. So the size will be 24, soften is at zero, and then we're going to click OK. All right. So that looks right, which is good. That means that my um, my foreground and background aren't impacting it, which I'm glad. Now double click the bo uh, bevel and emboss layer style in the layers panel to open that box back up. So you'll double click here and the box will come back. Set the style to inner bevel. and the technique to chisel hard, the depth to 120, size to 44, and you'll keep that soften at zero. Then press OK. Ooh, now it's getting snazzy. Then save your work. Again, I forgot to save as bevel and emboss, so I'll do that now. All right, so now we're gonna apply a gloss contour. Um, so double click the bevel and emboss layer style again to open that box. Move the layer style bo box out of the way, okay, as much as I can, so you can kind of just see the bottom here. Click the gloss contour arrow, then position the mouse over the third square in the second row. So the gloss contour is down here, and the third square in the second row. So if I click on that, you can kind of see 
it got really crummy, really shiny there. Oh, click ring double, then move the dialog box out of the way to see the effect. So if you hover over these, they will tell you their names. So that one is the ring double, the one that we just selected. And then it says click each of the 11 gloss contours so that you can see what they do. I'm going to move my box aside for this. And so the little preview window here kind of gives you an idea of what you're looking at with each of these changes. There you go. That was fun. Okay, so now click the second gloss contour named cone on the top row. That would be this one. Very nice. Click the anti alias checkbox beside the gloss contour and then click OK. So click it on. All right. OK. And then save your work. Now we're going to apply an outer bevel um, using the same methods. So verify the headline layer is targeted, and then we're going to do Command or Control J to make a copy. Rename the new layer inner bevel and then hide it. So the new layer is the one here on top. Call it inner bevel and then hide it. Target the headline layer and rename it outer bevel. Drag the layers effects button down to the little trash can to delete it. So just click and hold and drag down here and it's gone. <clears throat> Okay, so double click the outer layer to open the layer styles box and click the words bevel and emboss. So remember, if you click in this little arrow area here outside of the text, um, it'll open that layer styles box and you don't have to go through the menu. And then we will click bevel and emboss. Set the style to outer bevel. The technique to chisel hard, the depth to 100, size to 13, and soften value will stay at zero. And then uncheck the use global light button. So right here under shading, you're going to uncheck this, set the angle to 139 and the altitude to 32. So angle will be 139, altitude will be 32. And then click the Cove Deep Gloss Contour. So looks like that's the fourth one over. Like I said, if you don't have this nice little picture, you can always hover over these options and they will eventually pop up and tell you what they are and then press OK. And then you can zoom in and see these effects here. Now you're going to show the inner bevel layer. So it's going to be layered on top. You can play around toggling these on and off to see the differences. And then save your work and you're finished with this file. Yay, these are going fast today. All right, so any questions on this one?
great, we'll keep moving. Close it, go to lesson three. Creating a new gradient. <clears throat> so we're gonna open file 4-3 and save it as making the gradient. So file, open, 4-3, open, and then I'll do what I'm supposed to do this time, save as making the gradient. Okay, so click the gradient tool on the toolbar. It looks like this. Then um, the gradient, pick, or I'm sorry, and then it says click the gradient picker list arrow as identified in figure 18. So that's gonna be in your options panel up here. So this one, I may have done that. Hold on. Incorrectly, I may have moved. So if you, I'm sorry. So yes. Yeah, so if you click, um, if you click here, then it opens up your gradient ed gradient editor box, which we're going to use. Um, but for right now, we're just clicking on the little down arrow. And so that's going to show you some of the pre-made gradients that are already in um, Photoshop there. And we're going to expand the reds folder and click the first one. Click the linear gradient button on the options panel. So right next to that box, you have your linear, um, you have the radial, what is this one called? Angle, reflected, and then diamond. So that first one is linear. Oh, good. And it gives you uh, an explanation of each of those. All right. So position the mouse pointer over the left edge of the canvas and then click and drag to the right edge of the canvas. So this is going to be very, very similar to your gradient tool in Illustrator if you're an Illustrator user. Um, so you're just kind of drawing a line like that and it fills it with the gradient. <clears throat> now click and drag from the top to the bottom. And then you can go from corner to corner just to see how this tool works. You can go to the opposite corner and it reverses it. So Click and drag, let's see, no, I'm sorry, click near the center of the canvas and drag from left to right, approximately one inch, then compare your results. So try that way, then this way. Let's see if we do it very small, a little bit bigger, and so on. Okay. So now click the radial gradient button, which is the second one. Position your pointer at the center of the canvas and then drag approximately one inch to the right. Ooh. It's dark and mysterious. There you go. <clears throat> now save your work. All right, so now we're going to create a new gradient. And something really important for you to note here is that I'm going to want you to fill your canvas with your new gradient um, because for some reason, they left that part out. And so I added a note that says, apply the new gradient to your canvas in the linear gradient style. So make sure you don't miss that part. Okay, so back to the top here. So click the gradient picker box on the options panel. So that's what I had done earlier. So just click kind of in the middle of there. And then you get this gradient editor box. So um, 
what's to be known here is that this is where you can rename your gradient and then this is your gradient slider um, these little boxes down here that kind of look like houses these are called color stops and so in order to edit these you can click and drag them around if you want to change their color um, you have that option right here in the box to just pick there but i think you can also double click them let's try it yeah you can double click them as well and then as far as um, specific locations as you select the boxes you can define exactly where you want them to sit on your slider using that little location box. So click, let's see, click the first leftmost stop, which is this one. And then it says, as soon as I do that, the name has changed to custom. Click the color box below the gradient ramp to open the color picker. And then we're going to type in a custom color number. So 29 red, 70 green, and oh, I did that wrong. 170 blue, it was supposed to be five. And then click OK. And so now that color has changed to the value that I entered. Now click the last stop and you're gonna change it to the same royal blue. So click here, click on the color, and then you'll enter those values again. So 29, five, 170, and then okay. Now click below the gradient ramp between the first and the second color stops. And so um, you're going to add a color stop by doing this. So if I kind of hover here, it gave me the message that if I click now, it's going to add a color stop. Drag the new color stop until its location is 25. Um, I'm just going to enter it here. And oops. I didn't mean to click enter. Stop the whole thing. Okay, that's okay. It opened back up. Now change the color of the new stop to 246 red, 142 green, and 86 blue. So red, 246, green, 142, blue, 86. And then OK. Now drag the color midpoint diamond slider between the first and second color stop to 75 as shown. So these ones, in my opinion, are a little tricky. Um, oh, and I didn't know you could do that. So I just was scrolling my mouse wheel because that's what I always do when I think I can zoom in on something that I can't. Um, and it was actually moving it for me, which is kind of nice. I like that. Okay. Um, but that's not what we're doing. <laughs> so you, this one's a little bit tricky because you kind of have to like hover over this diamond and without adding a color stop. And it did, which is not what I was trying to do. So I'll delete that. Okay. There we go. Now it's letting me drag it. Um, so that might take a couple of tries trying to get a hold of this diamond without um, without just adding the color stop. So here we go, 75. There we go. Then it says the blue orange stops are blended equally three-quarters of the way between the two stops. Now we're going to type blue, orange, rose, and blue in the name box. I'm just going to do a little copy. There we go. And then click OK. Now I have made this gradient. So what I want you to do is apply the gradient 
however you want it. It can be diagonally, up and down, but I want it to be linear. So hit that linear button and draw it a couple times, however you want. And then you can save and submit. Yay, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> for this week at least. Um, the gradient editor is what happens when you click inside of um, this area instead of in the down area. So if you go down, you can click the pre-made gradients and open those. But if you just click inside of it, it opens the gradient editor. All right, any other questions?